What's up, producers? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique, and we've got another video tutorial for you today. Today, we're going to be taking a close look at Heaviosity's brand new saturation distortion plugin called Fury. You know what it is. I always say it. Don't sleep on saturation. So anytime I get my hands on a new saturation and distortion or otherwise, quote unquote, color affecting plugin, I get very excited. Now, this one comes with a lot of bells and whistles and most importantly, a ton of different flavors of saturation and distortion. All right, so what we're gonna do is jump into a general overview of the plugin, and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a bunch of the different presets on some drums and on some bass. So if you want that, I'm gonna leave uh, chapters here on YouTube so you can just jump to that, but it's a action-packed video, so make sure to watch the whole thing because this is an incredible plugin you're definitely gonna want in your toolbox. So as usual with these, I've thrown it on a sub, and that's the best way to kind Kind of hear the character of the saturation and then from there you can extrapolate what it can do to other sounds so out of the gate this is the bass that we're working with today So it's already got a little bit, there's a very gentle bit of saturation and bit of color on the top end of that frequency spectrum. This is what it sounds like after I threw Fury on it. Now, <laughs> that feedback is super cool. And we're gonna get into that in a little bit. It's under the shape module. Um, I'm gonna pull it down just so we don't hear it because it actually stays on if I leave it up too high. And I actually like that when I'm working with it. You can obviously put on a gate as well. But uh, before we jump into it, the thing I wanna do is just go ahead and pull up the mix knob here. This is the mix between the original signal and the wet signal. And what I'm gonna do is run through some of these different module combinations. So they're calling this a semi-modular workflow. So we've got a drive mode. This is applied to the incoming signal. Then we have the distortion mode, which is applied to the signal after that original drive mode is applied. And then we have a tone mode, which will do a little bit of frequency shaping at the tail end before it comes out of the plugin. So all in all, between the drive mode, distortion mode, and tone mode, we actually have 720 combinations. It's a lot. So with my mix up, uh, I'm going to double click the tone, just bring it at 50. Uh, maybe reduce the movement for a second. The movement is in the modulation. And this way we can really hear what's going on. There's also a through hard clip, soft clip, and limit options for the output. I'm gonna leave it on soft clip for now. And let's just check out a few of the combinations of the different modules. Oh boy. So obviously with 720 possible combinations, I'm not gonna be able to do it all here, but I think that gives you a very general sense of what's uh, possible in terms of really pushing it. Obviously my drive is at 72 here. I've got a little bit more wiggle room there to, if I want even more. My mix is pretty close to 100%. And towards the end there, I kind of push the tone. I push that because the tone is actually tied to the tone mode. If I've got a high cut here and I push the tone way open, essentially it's just going to really open up the filter and it's not going to be cutting off anything. It doesn't give you exactly what the values are. And again, I, I don't really think I need to know that. 
I just am guessing that it's completely open. If it's rolling off some really high frequency content, not really important. What's important is what it sounds like to me and how it sits in the mix. So uh, I'm not really too concerned about exact values with saturation and distortion. Really, it's all about how it colors the sound and how I feel about it in the end. So I actually forgot what I had <laughs> uh, to begin with. So let's see if I can... Let's see if I can find something that I like. I mean, that sounds great. Uh, let's leave it there. If, you know what? Let me push up the mix just so we can really hear stuff. I do this in videos and I have to say it over and over again because there's always comments. I push it way past where it's going to be in the end just so I can hear the character and then I roll back. That's just my process. You might like to do it the opposite way, but that's just what I'm doing here, okay? Uh, from there, we've got the shape module. And this is really cool. It actually shows you the frequency of the incoming signal versus the output. So why this is helpful, right? You can see here that as I push this mix, I'm getting a lot more of this mid to low frequency content, but I'm also losing the subby portion. And that's really important. You'll find that with a lot of saturation distortion modules, when you have the mix way up, sure you're coloring the higher frequency content, but what you're doing is also reducing the subby low end. So when you're working with something like a sub, you'll need to keep that in mind and decide, you know, what's the trade-off. You know, it might be better to pull down the mix and then push up the tone and, or maybe decide a different distortion type. So from there, we've got some stereo controls. We've got a gating control. We have the input EQ. This would be a little bit like the tone, but before we actually add the distortion. And then we've got character where we've got feedback. And you can really hear that. Uh, then we have some cleanup options. So if you look kind of where the original signal is meeting the affected signal, you'll see a dip happen right around here. So that's what that's doing. And then this will decide where along the frequency range it is. So you can see the slope there. And as I move it, it will move up. And that's doing something very similar, just in a different frequency range. So this one goes up to about 600 hertz, and this one's from uh, 6 kilohertz to, or 600 hertz is the same thing, up to around 16. Uh, it's just a couple of extra ways to reduce any harshness that you might hear from the distortion that you've chosen. From there, we've got a pretty great modular section. We've got an envelope follower, an LFO, and a sequencer where you can come in and randomize things. And then you can apply those to the drive, the tone, the feedback, and the output. So obviously, if I introduce the movement, you'll start to see it in this really helpful graphic. And also this, these lines move as well. So again, that's way too much. It's losing my boomy subbiness and it's just uh, too much movement. But if I pull that down, It just sounds great. And if we introduce the feedback. You can hear it come in afterwards. I love that. It really adds a lot to the track if we listen to it in the context of the track. Uh, and the tone does affect the feedback as well. So not only do we have control over this here, 
So as it's a lot less there, we could have the amount slider, but that's in direct correlation to whatever we choose down here as well. So this is your range and this is the global kind of amount you have. So that's the kind of general overview. Let's see what it sounds like on some drums. So I'm gonna come over here to my drum pattern and perhaps what I'll do is cycle through some of the presets. So before we do that, let's listen to the dry drums. And now let's cycle through the different drum presets that we have. So as I said, you have 720 combinations of distortion modules. Uh, and then you also have, I think, over 120 presets that ship with it. So lots to get you started. Oh, I really like that one. If that little bit of just raspy crackly that it's adding to those drums. Oh, I really like that one. So that's just a few of the drum presets. And you know what? I think that's a good idea just so you can really hear Fury in action. I'm gonna do the same thing with the bass presets. Just run through them. So again, this is the dry sub. And now with Fury. Let's check out a few of these rhythmic ones as well before we wrap up the video. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I wonder what that sounds like in the track.
I mean, that sounds pretty hot. Oh my. Wow. Wow. All right, so there we go. That's just a quick look at getting started with Fury by Heaviosity. It's available already on PluginBoutique.com. So as always, links are in the video description. And I'm Joshua Casper here with Plugin Boutique. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.